Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, Labour and the Tories are anxious to stress the general election result is not a foregone conclusion, though you just had Mr Lamb say there for the Lib Dems he thought they were heading, Tories were heading for a massive landslide. But Thursday's dramatic set of local election results in England, Scotland and Wales do give us a better idea of how the country might vote on June the 8th. Here's Emma Vardy with a behind-the-scenes look at how the day after polling unfolded. Good morning, it's 7 o'clock on Friday the 5th of May. The dawn of another results day. Anticipation hung in the air. Well, in the Today studio at least. Early results from the local elections in England suggest there's been a substantial swing from Labour to the Conservatives. While the pros did their thing, I needed breakfast. Don't tell anyone, but I'm going to pinch a sausage. The overnight counts had delivered successes for the Tories, but with most councils only just getting started, there was plenty of action still to come. It's not quite the night of Labour's nightmares. There's enough mixed news in Wales, for example, looks like they're about to hold Cardiff, that they'll try and put a reasonably brave face on. But in really simple terms, you four weeks from a general election, the Tories are going forward and Labour are going backwards, and UKIP have disappeared. <laughs> How does it compare being in here to doing the telly? <laughs> I can dress like this. Hugh, how do you prepare yourself for a long day of results then? Uh, ha, 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 ha. We're not even on air yet, um, as you can see. <laughs> um, and already in Tory HQ this morning, there's a kind of, oh, we're a bit scared about this will make people think that the election's just going to be a uh, shoe. Yeah, I think leave it like that. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I want the Laura look. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is really good, isn't it? Well, you might recognise this place. Usually we're in here for the daily politics, but it's been transformed for the election results programme. Party's about to start. Conservative wins kept on coming. But hours went by without UKIP winning a single seat. It was getting awkward. The joke going round Lincolnshire County Council today from the Conservatives is that the Tories have eaten the kippers for breakfast. We will rebrand and come back strong. What about morale? Yeah. Morale, I think, is inevitably going to take a bit of a tumble, particularly if Theresa May starts backsliding on Brexit. And then I think we will be totally reinvigorated. There are a lot of good people in UKIP, and I, I wouldn't want to say anything unkind, but we all know that it's over. UKIP right. press officer. Well, if you can drop me a line and press that UKIP door. UKIP weren't the only ones putting a brave face on it. Labour were experiencing their own disaster day too, losing hundreds of seats and seven councils. If the result is what these um, results appear to indicate, those will be disappointing results. Can we have a quick word for the Sunday politics? We're doing a little bit of... And really quick question for the Sunday politics. How are you feeling? Downhearted or fired up for June? Fired up. Absolutely fired up. We're going to go it's out fired there. Up. We cannot go on with another five years of this. That's a man fired up. How's it been for you today? Um, tiring. <laughs> it always is, but I love elections. I really enjoy them. Um, Even on a day like today? Yeah, yeah. Obviously we're disappointed at some of the results, but it's been a mixed bag where some of the opinion polls and commentators are predicting we would be wiped out. We haven't. As for the Lib Dems, not the resurgence they hoped for, but there was this. After a dead heat in Northumberland, the control of a whole council came down to the drawing of straws. This is the brains of the operation. The section of England in which we had elections yesterday was the section of England that was most likely to vote leave. When you go to sleep at night, do you just have election results cycling through that mind? Well, the of answer course? to is if, I'm, if that's still happening, I don't get to sleep, but there we go. Maybe practice some yoga. We got you a banana if you need Thank one. You very much, and I have one. Ah, I'll keep it then. With the introduction of six regional mayors, Labour's Andy Burnham became Mr. Manchester. But by the time Corbyn came to celebrate, the new mayor was nowhere to be found. We want you to stay for a second because I've got some results in from Scotland. I used to present news, as you probably know, so I used to present BBC Breakfast in the morning. 
The SNP had notable successes, ending 40 years of Labour control in Glasgow. What did you prefer, presenting or politics? Oh, politics is much, much harder. And it certainly had been a hard day at the office for some. UKIP's foothold in local government was all but wiped out, leaving the Conservatives with their best local election showing for years. So another election results day draws to a close. But don't worry, we'll be doing it all again in five weeks' time. For now, though, that's your lot. Off you go, off you go. That'll do. See you in June. Of Hardy reporting. Now let's look at some of Thursday's results in a little more detail and what they might mean for the wider fortunes of each of the political parties. In England, there were elections for 34 councils. The Conservatives took control of an additional 10 councils, gaining over 300 seats, while Labour sustained significant losses. While the Lib Dems lost 28 seats, UKIP came close to extinction and can now boast of only one councillor in the whole of England. In Scotland, the big story was Labour losing a third of their seats and control of three councils, while the Tories more than doubled their number of councillors. In Wales, both the Conservatives and Plaid Cymru made gains, mainly at Labour's expense. There was some encouraging news for Jeremy Corbyn's party after Liverpool and Manchester both elected Labour mayors, though the Tories narrowly won the West Midlands mayoral race. And we're joined now by who else but elections expert John Curtis. You saw him in Emma's film there. He's now back in Glasgow. John, good to see you again. What do, in broad terms, what do these local election results tell us about the general election result? Well, I think the first thing we have to remember is that what Theresa May wants to achieve in the general election is a landslide. And that winning a landslide means you really do have to win big in terms of votes. Now, the general election, the local election results certainly suggest that Theresa May is well on course to win the general election, at least with four weeks to go. And of course, people could change their minds. Uh, we all agree that the Conservatives were double digit figures ahead of Labour in these elections. However, whereas the opinion polls on average at the moment suggest there is a 17 point Conservative lead and that definitely would deliver a landslide. Uh, it seems, however, that the local election figures, at least in England, point to something closer to a 11-point Conservative lead. And that, in truth, would not necessarily deliver the landslide that Mrs uh, May wants. So the truth is, I think, therefore, the next four weeks are probably not about who wins this election unless something very dramatic changes. But there is still a battle afoot to whether or not Mrs May achieves her objective of winning that landslide. She's got to win big. She might be there, but the local election says she's not got sure to be there and therefore um, she is going to have to campaign hard. And equally, Labour, while they don't have much prospect of winning the election, still at least have the goal of trying to keep the Conservative majority relatively low and therefore the Parliamentary Labour Party alive and kicking. Interesting you say, John, that the local election results don't in themselves uh, produce a landslide if replicated on June the 8th. But when I looked at when local elections had taken place before, a month before the general election, it was in 1983 and 1987. The Tories did well in both local elections in these years. But come the general election, they added five points to their share of the vote. If that were, there's no reason that should happen again, but if it was, that would take them into landslide territory. Oh, absolutely it? right, yes. If the Conservatives do five points better than they did in the local elections, they're definitely in landslide territory. The thing, however, of course, we have to remember in 1983, the Labour Party ran a relatively inept campaign, and we know their support fell away during the campaign. And in 1987, mm. uh, David Owen and David Steele couldn't keep to the same lines, and therefore the alliance didn't do terribly well. So uh, I think that just underlines that how well the opposition campaign in the next four weeks does potentially matter in terms of Theresa May's ability to achieve her objective. And I think it is worth noticing, even in the opinion polls, really two things have happened so far. The first is undoubtedly UKIP voters, a significant slice of them going to the Conservatives. That helped to increase the Conservative lead in the polls. 
But in the last week or so, Labour's vote seems to have recovered to some degree, so that the party is now not that far short of what Ed Miliband got uh, in 2015, and therefore the Conservative lead is back down to the 16, 17 point okay. mark with which we started. So I don't think, again, we should necessarily presume that Labour are going to go backwards in the way, for example, they did in the 1983 campaign. John, I want to finish by asking you if there are some deeper forces at work here and whether referenda in this country are producing realignments in British politics. Uh, I'm thinking that the Scottish referendum has produced a, a kind of realignment in Scotland and then in a different way, the Brexit referendum is producing a realignment in England and Wales. It, it, is that, do you agree with that? You're quite right. Uh, referendums are potentially highly disruptive in Scotland. They help to ensure that the constitutional question became the central issue and the 45% of people who voted yes have been pretty faithful for, to the SNP since, although in truth the SNP were put in a relatively disappointing performance in Scotland on Thursday. Equally south of the border, certainly on the Leave side, it's very clear that increasingly over the last 12 months, and particularly in the last few weeks, the Conservatives have corralled the Leave vote inside their tent. Somewhere between three-fifths and two-thirds of those who voted, who voted Leave now say they'll vote Conservative. The figure last summer was only around 50%. However, on the Remain side, the vote is still fragmented. There's some of them quite going to vote for the Conservatives. Are they going to vote for Labour? Others voting for the Democrats. And in a sense, the reason why Theresa May is in a stronger position she is, is not simply because she's, the Leave vote is indeed being realigned, mm -hmm. but the Remain vote hasn't. All right. John Curtis, as always, fascinating. Thank you for joining us. Uh, John Ganesh, let me pick up on this, because you can go through polls and wonder who's up, who's down. But it, I wonder whether these two referenda, the Scottish one and then the Brexit one, have produced some quite fundamental changes. For example, in Scotland, the real division now uh, is the dominant division is between a centre-left nationalist party and a centre-right unionist party. And that's had the consequence of squeezing Labour out quite considerably in the argument, never mind the Greens or the Lib Dems. And in Britain, the Brexit, in London, England, Wales, the Brexit referendum seems to have produced a realignment of the right to the Tories' advantage and some trouble for the Labour blue-collar vote in the Midlands and the North. Yeah, the, in England, we've got half of a realignment. Mm. So it works for the pro-Brexit uh, right of centre uh, end of the spectrum, but not for the other half. And it is remarkable that in the last century we had people like Roy Jenkins dreaming of and writing about a realignment in British politics as though it could be consciously engineered. And in fact, what made it happen was just the, the calling of a referendum. It's not something that you can uh, consciously put about as a, as a politician. It, it flows from below. When the public begin to think of politics in terms of single issues or dominant issues, such as uh, uh, leaving the European Union, rather than a broad spectrum um, designed by a political class. And I wonder whether now Remain have it in them to coalesce behind a single party. It doesn't look like they can do it behind Labour. It looks like the Liberal Democrats are too badly led and frankly too small in Parliament to constitute that kind of force. Uh, the closest thing there is to a powerful Remain party is the SNP, which by definition has limited appeal south because of the border. Because it's confined to, to Scotland. So it is half so, a realignment. There is some, I, we don't know whether it's permanent, we don't know just how dramatic it will be, but there is some kind of realignment going on. And at the moment, it seems to be a realignment that, that by and large is to the benefit of the Conservatives. Well, without a doubt, and that can be directly attributed to the kind of disappearance of UKIP from the political landscape. I have been saying since the referendum that I thought UKIP was finished. They still seem to be sort of staggering on and under the illusion we heard Nigel Farage, some people may have picked up on it this morning on one of the other political programmes saying that UKIP still had a strong role to play until Brexit actually happens. But I think it's very, very hard to convince voters of that because they feel that with the result and the referendum referendum that was really UKIP's job done and those votes are not going to the Labour Party because of all the flaws with Jeremy Corbyn's leadership they are in fact shifting to the Tories. What are your thoughts on realignment? I, I agree I think the key issue was the referendum and it has produced a fundamental change that few predicted at the time it was called. Mm. And, uh, most fundamental of all, it has brought about a unity in the Conservative Party, with some exceptions, but they're now off editing the Evening Standard and other things. <laughs> um, this now is a party united around Brexit. And since 1992, the Tories have been split over Europe at times near 
fatally so. The referendum, in ways that David Cameron did not anticipate, has brought about a united front for this election, which is, in a way, a sequel to the referendum because it's about Brexit, but we still don't know what form Brexit's going to take. So by calling it early, Theresa May has, in effect, got another go at a kind of Brexit referendum without knowing what Brexit is, with the united Tory party behind her. Well, we shall see if this is a blip or a long-term trend that's now underway in British politics. I've been getting away with it all.